All right, we are up to module nine. Yay, which means we're halfway through our chemistry book. So we're gonna move on to this new module today. As a quick refresher, in module eight, we learned about the shape of atoms and how to draw their Lewis structures. In this module, we are going to learn about the shape of molecules, so groups of atoms. Um, to get us started, we need to learn a new term, polyatomic ions. As you can kind of tell from the name, poly means many or more than one, and atomic, so we're talking about more than one atom, and they join together to form an ion. So the definition is ions, which are formed when a group of atoms gains or loses electrons. Ions which are formed when a group of atoms gains or loses electrons. And there's a list of common polyatomic ions in your textbook. Uh, let's see, that is on page 288. So you might want to make a note of that. Page 288 is table 9.1. Those are important polyatomic ions that you will eventually memorize. So start to get familiar with those. One of those important polyatomic ions is hydroxide. The chemical formula is OH negative, so it has a one negative charge. How does this form? Okay, so first we're gonna draw Lewis structures for a single hydrogen and a single oxygen. Hydrogen has one valence electron, Oxygen has six because it's in column six. So I drew the dots around each of those. And then you can see that this one hydrogen electron is gonna share with one of the oxygen valence electrons. They share, so they become H bonded to O. And then the O has still one, two, three, four, five, uh, other electrons around it. Um, so you can see that O is still not completely satisfied because oxygen wants to have an ideal electron configuration with eight valence electrons. And right now it has one, two, three, four, five, and then it's sharing six and seven. So it's not quite to eight yet. Hydrogen, however, is satisfied because hydrogen just wants to have two for hydrogen, that's the only exception where the ideal electron configuration is two electrons and it is sharing those two. So, enter a sodium atom. This is just for example, okay? So if something comes along like sodium, which has one valence electron, Okay, the sodium will easily, we're going to say it easily gives up one valence electron to form, and this is where the ions come in, to form an ionic compound with the H O that is hanging out too. Okay? So H O this H O and O and this sodium become dot, 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 H bonded to O, the o, the, o, the o or the oxygen has taken the valence electron from sodium, so it now has one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's sharing seven and eight electrons, so it has a negative charge. You know what, I probably shouldn't put the dot, dot, dot after become, because those look like little floating electrons, don't they? So I'm gonna erase those. <clears throat> so that's where we get the hydroxide ion, and since the sodium has given up its electron, it now has one more proton than it has electrons, 
so it has a positive charge. So we have the hydroxide ion and the sodium ion, and of course they're bonded together by an ionic, by an ionic bond because the negative force of hydroxide is attracted to the positive force of the sodium ion, okay? So this is what we call hydroxide, which is a polyatomic ion. And that's our first example and definition. Now let me erase this and we will move on. So you can see in table 9-1 of your book that there are several important polyatomic ions. They're important just because they occur fairly regularly and so you need to get to know them and you need to know their charges. All right, any ion, we're just going to add this even though we've already kind of said it, any ion that has more than one atom is called a poly, which means many, polyatomic ion. And then, uh, if you have this already, uh, actually, we're going to write table. Write into your notes that you want to learn table 9.1. The book says that you are supposed to memorize them, and some of you might have to memorize them. For my students in my class, I will allow you to write them out on a little 3 by 5 index card and use that for reference while we're studying this module. I think that you'll probably get to know these ions as you're using your little reference card, but you will be able to use that index card on the test. So make yourself an index card of this table. Now let's try some examples. Example 9.1 in your book. Example 9.1 says, what is the chemical formula for calcium nitrate? Okay, so you should recognize that the word nitrate is not an element, but if you know your polyatomic ions, you will know that it is a polyatomic ion. So we have to come up with a chemical formula for it. Okay, starting, let's see, calcium 9.1 starts, example 9.1, not calcium 9.1. Example 9.1 starts with calcium nitrate. And again, we have to write out the chemical formula for it. So calcium, we know, is Ca. It is in the second column, which means it is at, the first column is 1 plus, the second column is 2 plus. So calcium has a 2 plus charge. Then, looking at your table, 9.1, or your little index card that you have paused and created just now, you look up nitrate, be careful, because there's also a nitrite, but you see that nitrate is NO3 minus, okay? Which means that it has a one minus charge. We as chemists just don't write the one. Okay, so that is nitrate, and this is calcium. Now, in order to come up with the chemical formula for the whole molecule, we just do the trick that we learned last module by flip-flopping these two numbers and dropping the charges. So calcium would have an invisible one down there. Nitrate, you have to keep the atoms that are present in nitrate together. So we have to put them inside parentheses. So now we're gonna write parentheses NO3 because that's what nitrate is. It's made of nitrogen and three oxygens. And then how many would we need? We'd need two of them. The two goes outside of the parentheses. Okay, let's try another one. Moving on to example 9.1, what is the chemical formula of magnesium phosphate? Okay, so there's calcium nitrate. Now we're going to do magnesium phosphate. 
ran out of room there a little bit. Okay, magnesium is Mg, and I think it's in the first column, let's see. Nope, it's in the second column. It's in the second column, which means it has a two plus charge. Magnesium is two plus. Phosphate, look at your table or your index card. Phosphate is PO43 minus. So I'll write that under phosphate, PO4, and it has an overall charge of three minus. Okay, now we're gonna flip flop these two upper numbers, the numbers that represent the charges. So we have magnesium. How many magnesiums do we need? We bring this three over, so we need three magnesiums. How many phosphates do we need? Remember, phosphate is PO4. <whistles> Squeak! PO4, we need to keep that together in parentheses. How many of those do we need? We need two of them. So that would be the chemical formula for magnesium phosphate. And we've got one more in our example. Copper, one acetate. Copper, one is the Roman numeral, acetate. So copper is Cu, and the Roman numeral tells us that it has a one plus charge, one plus acetate. That does not sound like an element to me, so it must be on our important polyatomic ions table. And it is, it's a long one, it is C2, H3O2, and it has a one minus charge, okay? So the one plus, oh silly me, I put the one down, we don't need the one there, we just need a plus sign. So the plus and the minus would cancel each other out, meaning you just need one of each. So the overall formula would be Cu, and then write out acetate, C2H3O2. And that, my friends, is how you work with polyatomic ions. Remember to make yourself an index card or memorize them.